Friends, welcome back to the Wild at Heart podcast here in the week of... March 15th. March 15th, which means that St. Patrick's Day falls in the middle of this week, the 17th. I love St. Patrick's Day. Yes. One of my favorite <laughs> holidays. Not because of shamrocks and... Green beer. And green beer or green milkshakes or whatever it was. The shamrock shake. Anybody remember those? Oh, yeah. Uh, vividly. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> those were terrible. But because he was such a great guy and such yes. an amazing friend of God and what he did. So if y'all haven't read How the Irish Saved Civilization, it is a great read. And so there you go, Patrick, remembering you this week. You're hearing other voices. And with me, Stacy and Alan and Kelly Arnold this week. Welcome, guys. Thanks. Listeners will recognize you, Alan, and that velvety voice. Why, thank you. <laughs> because <laughs> you are often uh, our co-host and often in the conversations. And Kelly, it's been a while since you've been on the podcast. Welcome back. Thank you. Kelly is a member of our intercessory team for Wild at Heart. And we're so grateful. So the reason that we are together is we have been talking about going after, trying to support, encourage, strengthen the heart, mm -hmm. bringing the heart back to center stage here in our podcast conversations. And so before we jump into this week, which I'm really excited about, I just want to ask you guys, 2020, now into 2021, was it easy to keep track of your heart in the last 12 months? What heart? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Oh, what a question. What a huge question. No. Easy? No. Because? Even remembering to contend for got lost. And it's a blur. Even, at, even now, I look back, and it was, we were in March. Could you even describe it or write it down? I don't know. There's too much. There's too much to process and think about and remember for my heart and my mind and my body yes. and the circumstances around. And the word picture I would I would probably give it is a tornado or a hurricane or mm. some kind of chaotic disaster. Oh goodness. Yes. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, and we're the mobile home park. <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> Blowing yes. somewhere. Yes. And there's nothing left. Yeah, I think for me, it, 2020 was a very numbing time for the heart. So my heart was shutting down. It was numb a good bit of the time. And now in 2021, it feels like the pressure is just get on with it now. Just, just kick it into high gear, make up for lost time, um, do all the things you couldn't have done. But the downside is there's not a nurturing of the heart when it's numb. And there's not a nurturing of the heart when it's just get it done. Yeah. So it feels like that's been missed. Even though we're in a new season, the heart doesn't feel very new. It feels worn out. Yeah, that's interesting that you say now it's get it done. Because I think, you know, the whole world is just longing to get back. Can we just like get back to normal, please? And so I feel a pressure to get back on my feet without having taken care of my heart right. from what it's been through or, or thinking about, hey, heart, how are you doing these days? Right. And then the, the other part is that I know there was the big excitement. I just can't wait till 2021. But honestly, things didn't change a lot. Mm -hmm. And I really had a thought before I said that. But that is part of the, the deal. COVID brain. Yeah. yeah. Yes. I tried to open the front door of the building with my car keys yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> That's COVID break. I mean, and how long did it take you to figure out? Well, that it I wasn't heard working? the I heard the click, click, <laughs> clicking of of my car <laughs> behind me in the parking lot, and realized that the key fob I was holding is not the same key fob that opens the front door. Like, yeah, we. <laughs> that is so yeah, funny. So, COVID brain and all the other yes. effects of of 2020, yeah. 2021, and, and just the last year that we've been living through. I was thinking about you guys this morning as we were coming into record today, and I was remembering back to 
Journey of Desire, which I think for the two of you was the access point into the life of the heart. I think you were lying on the beach in Florida and Alan, I think you were reading a copy of Journey of Desire. Have I got that story wrong? That's well, a good memory. Journey of Desire was our first entry point to knowing about Ransomed Heart, now Wild at Heart. On the beach, it was reading Walking with God. Okay. And we had an advanced copy. So it was probably six months before the book came out. And we were on an anniversary trip. And Kelly and I were trading chapters, reading out loud, Aww. sitting on the beach. And it was a beautiful setting. But, but more than that, it was this awakening to um, a lot of desire and a lot of the heart because we had been trying to live uh, a good, moral, Christian life, but had missed the intimacy part. And the intimacy part requires the heart to be alive and awake. Mm. And so that was that was a huge part of our awakening into we knew about the heart, but it opened up a whole nother realm for us. People often wonder, okay, you guys talk about the heart a lot and accessing your heart and how's your heart doing? And if you go for coffee with anybody on the Ransom Heart, Wild at Heart team, you're going to get asked, how's your heart? How, how are you doing? How are you doing? And what we mean by that is, how is the life of your heart? And the reason I was thinking of Journey of Desire is because desire is one of the shortcuts. If you want to access the heart, you yes. access desire. You access dreams, longings, hopes, fears, you, that whole cluster of wonderful things that center around desires and the core desires of the heart for love and meaning and life and and then all the very unique and particular ways yes it it expresses itself in our in our unique hearts so what i'm aware of is that 2020 2021 kind of the last year if we look at this as sort of the anniversary march was when the world really shut yes. down you know yeah. it went progressively of course across mm -hmm. europe and yes. asia and, and and then into the British Isles and over to the Americas, but March was was really lockdown time. Mm -hmm. And what did that do to desire? Locked it down. <laughs> it was a lockdown on desire, I think, because there was so much fear swarming around. There was so much unknown. There was this sense of just hunker down and the biggest adventure was, couldn't we find toilet paper? Uh, and can we, <laughs> right. you, know, you know, stock the shelves uh, at the grocery store and fight for whatever's on the shelf? And it just was a time, I think, where the heart seemed and desire seemed almost irrelevant or almost such an extra that you didn't, you know, like, why would you spend time in desire in the heart? Yes. Like... This is a, a crisis, a worldwide crisis. Let's get serious. Let's hunker down. And there was always something new to fear or to worry about, it seemed like. And so I think desire just felt like a frivolous extra that there was just no time for. Don't even think about it. And I think that that is the state of affairs for many people. Yes, that it feels frivolous and extravagant and so even that question of how's your heart, are you desiring? Mm -hmm. Do you have dreams? Because mm. um, you're meant to. And it really is a, a good way to take the pulse mm. of um, are, we, are you nourishing your heart? Is it thriving? And, and this was really brutal on everyone this season that we're coming out of yes. or still in. Or still in. Yeah. Yeah, still in trying to emerge from. Yes. And so... When you are in survival mode, desire feels like another universe. It's like no time for that. That's, That's for, a luxury you can't afford. It really no feels like a luxury. Yeah. Yeah. No emotional energy for right. it. Right. You just don't have the kind of the wherewithal to dream, to sustain. But the heart, oh, what's, this, what's the line in the Song of Songs? Though I slept, my heart was awake. Yes. The yes. heart has a life. Yes. 
that continues on underneath the surface. Mm -hmm. And this is what surprises many people when it suddenly, you know, presents itself in a crisis of some sort, an affair, you know, you suddenly find yourself raging at people on the freeway. You know, right. you're like, whoa, where did that all come from? Mm -hmm. Well, because your heart is continues to have a life, even if it's, you know, under the frozen tundra or the the ice shelf in the Antarctic. So, friends, here in the week of March 15th, many of you are joining us this week participating in something that we are calling the Wild at Heart Experience and the Captivating Experience. And if you listen to last week's podcast, you know what that is. But let me remind everyone, we really felt that it was time, and again, the kindness of Jesus to do this. He was preparing us for this before the pandemic. Yeah. But we felt that it was time to really help strengthen people's hearts again in 2021. So last year, we made these beautiful new film series for men and for women exploring the core desires and dilemmas and wounding and hopes and strength and initiation and all of yes. that uh, of the feminine and of the masculine soul, the heart and soul. And those are available now on our website at wildatheart.org. And what we're inviting people to do is to join us for a six-week experience where, for free, each week we will email you one of the episodes, the episode of the week, with a special audio that goes with it from Stacy and me with some coaching, some questions for reflection, some readings, and kind of a, a package that you get in your inbox that you can sit down with and begin to intentionally care for your heart. And it is a sign-up thing. We're not just sending it out to anyone who doesn't want it. So you get to wildatheart.org and you get to the captivating or the wild at heart experience. You can find that right there on our homepage and sign up for it. And we will email you. And you can start the program anytime. You could start in June. You could start you know, in December. But what we thought would be fun, since so many people are starting it this week, that we would sort of track along with, with the recovery of the heart. And so each week, we're going to have another couple join Stace and I here in the studio and Alan and Kelly starting off with the first week. So you did the experience before coming in here. You did episode one, session one of the experience. I'm curious, what, given everything we've just said, what was it like to sit down watch the session, think about some of the prompts, and the, the readings. What, what did that do for you? Well, going back to, so the backstory coming into, uh, you know, of 2020 and 2021 and coming into um, the captivating experience, quick story, I, for several years, the way that I start the day is I get up early and I sneak downstairs and pour coffee because coffee and God go together, right? Yes. For and, many and people. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and if it's cold, put a fire in the fireplace. And then that's where I align myself with God for the day. Mm. And it's worked for years. It's, for, it's worked for decades. And over the years, I've used journaling and worship and Bible study and sweet little Jesus calling books and the daily prayer, which I still love. But at the end of last year, I began to realize I needed something different. Mm -hmm. I needed something that was more basic mm -hmm. and something that would remind me what was true. Mm -hmm. Because 2020 was who, who even knows what's true, right? Yeah, yeah. And so I knew that I need something different. Mm. And it's funny because for a while I would I would do the thing. I would come downstairs, make the coffee, sip of the fire, and I would stare at the wall. Uh-huh. Or the mountains or the birds sure. or the weather or right. My family would come over and go, hey, you okay? You know? And so I knew that that something needed to change because I was it was all I could do to show up mm -hmm. in the morning. And so along comes 
the captivating experience. And, you know, I've, I've read Captivating twice. I've been to the retreats. I've been part of large groups and small groups and led groups. So I knew what was in it, but it was such a different rescue. It's a rescue for this hour. Mm. And I'll tell you why I loved it the most. The film is, it's beautiful. It's vulnerable. The women, the, the stories, the production, the music score, the photography is to me like a work of art to behold. Yes. I love that. And I knew in the capacity that I was in, right, of just showing up, that's all yes. I can do. Yes. Um, I knew I couldn't do a Bible study that's 45 minutes a day of reading and, you know, and I'm in one of those right now and I'm not doing very well. Yeah. <laughs> and so what happened was the film to me filled me and awakened me. I would, I would just let it wash over me. And it would awaken me to the point where I wanted then to engage in the reading and the scripture and the reflective questions. And so I was surprised by such joy that it had that effect. Mm. So to me, it is the perfect hour for this. It's the perfect time, mm. which of course we know God knows. Yes, exactly. That's amazing. That's really cool. I didn't think about the healing effects of the beauty of it, but, yes. but aesthetics really matter to us. Mm. Yes. Like, I can really obsess over them as Alan will tell yes. you. I, I can really get into <laughs> words and edits and get down into the weeds because beauty matters. Yes. Mm -hmm. But Kelly, that's really good. Given the state of our beleaguered hearts and souls to sit before something that's simply beautiful and vulnerable and honest and kind and just let, I love it. You said you let it wash over you. That's good. Versus, you know, there, there's a time and a place for the hour long, you know, right. serious Bible study type thing or, but this isn't that, this is light. This is an easy ask of the soul. What about for you, Alan? I'm curious, sitting down as a guy and watching right. episode one, thinking about it. Right. And to me, the biggest surprise was, I know the content. We talk about it every day here. We live it. I was a part of the production of it. And yet it snuck up on me in a very fresh new way because you're seeing men talk about what used to bring them adventure as boys, you know, as su the superheroes, the, the things that stirred their heart. There's a lot of laughter in it. There's a lot of fun stories, but there's this longing for more. And as I was watching the one for men, I started tearing up. <laughs> it caught me off guard and it really, God was using it in a fresh way to say, experience this for the first time. And so he brought me deep into some questions I hadn't even been asking myself, like in terms of adventure. The curiosity was being pricked during the film in conversation of the men. And then I got to one of the questions that we have in the readings. And um, it was about, you know, where are you currently experiencing adventure? And what I realized is I'm doing a lot in terms of calling and story and as a writer and, and in those ways, but on a casual adventure, the, just a fun daily, weekly thing, I've forgotten how to have fun. Like I've forgotten how to nurture my heart in just pure joy where I'm a student, where I'm learning, where I'm fumbling through something, but that's bringing joy to my heart. It exposed that in a very kind way. And I just sat there after the film was over and probably for a half an hour and was like, God, you are inviting me into something, even mm -hmm. though I know the mm -hmm. tenants, 
it's it's been it's been lost in the last year and a half somehow. Of course. Of course, for most of us. Like I so you use the word play. I love that. Because that's what got lost for me in the last 12 months was just play. You know, serious time, serious business, things to pray about, things to, yes. you know, again, survival mode, right? right? And trauma and all the things we've been talking about for weeks on the on the podcast here. But just to use the word play, is there is there play in our lives? Is there room for play? Can can we return to play, even at just the simplest level? So Stace and I were working. Uh, I'll confess, we were working over the weekend here a couple of weeks ago, and there's a ping pong table <laughs> in the great room, in the family room here at the outpost. There is a ping pong table. I mean, there's the invitation to play, but the net was literally just sort of <laughs> droopy down, which showed you no one's, no used one's done that. it for a very long <laughs> right. time. For a very long time. <laughs> and so we did. We set the net back up. I'm like, come on, hon, let's just let's just play. And it was delightful. It was fun. It was so refreshing. Also, who won? <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> now the fun is gone. <laughs> wow. Good, good feelings fun. gone. <laughs> it was very, very, Stacey very, very, has very a, Stacey close. has a wicked serve. <laughs> she, she really does. So let me, let me tell you all about that ping pong game. If you'll remember, usually you're not here on a Sunday and I'm not here on a Sunday. Yes. And an ally and his son, 18-year-old son, was in town. So we had had lunch, and they said, we've never seen the outpost. They even named their son who was there. His middle name is Wild. Wow. Because of Wild at Heart. Whoa. And so they were like, could we see it? And Does he have my face tattooed on his, <laughs> on his arm? Yeah, I didn't, I didn't ask that question. Stop it. Um, <laughs> but so we were like, sure, let's do that. So Kelly and I take the ally and his son. They were here for a ski trip. And they come into the outpost, and the two of you, you know, they say hi, and we're surprised you were there and loved meeting you. And then Kelly and I are talking to them, and y'all start playing ping pong. And it was the most disruptive thing to them in a beautiful way because they're like, you know, their picture is you guys are fighting for the faith and, yeah, super you know, <laughs> and teaching and leading and, you know, the charge up the hill, and you're playing ping pong and laughing and just have enjoy, mm -hmm. and you could see it, it then just look like, wow, we this is awesome. Like, mm -hmm. this is a ministry. This is leaders of it are enjoying each other, playing, having fun. So that was kind That's of a cool. side to I that story. That. that is playful yeah. mm -hmm. in itself. Mm -hmm. I like that. Mm -hmm. So week one, episode one in the Wild at Heart experience and in the captivating experience focus on the core desires of the heart because desire is such the access point as i was saying it really is you can get in through other means you can certainly come in through the doorway of disappointments the doorway of childhood experiences and memories but that takes a little more reflective work and oftentimes mm -hmm. it can take the help of uh, of a therapist or your pastor, your priest, a trusted friend. But just desire, just mm -hmm. allowing desire itself to surface is a wonderful on-ramp available to everyone. And I, I was on a interview recently and we were talking about why 2020 was so hard on men and why the suicide rate is, is really quite tragic and domestic violence is up and alcohol and substance abuse is up for men, especially. Mm. Why? When I go, oh, I, I can tell you that in a moment. I, because I love to fix things. Oh, mm -hmm. yes. Mm. It, right. It's just core. Mm. Like if something's wrong, I want to make it right. I'm, I'm here to help. I'm, I'm here to intervene. I'm, I'm here to bring something to the table. <laughs> that is helpful, right? Like it's yes, just so yes, core right. to human nature. Mm. Yes. And and we've confessed on the podcast in the past that one of the most romantic things that gets said in our <laughs> home is when Stacy says, Honey, can you help me with this? And I, I'm telling you, like da, 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 da. <laughs> Yes. Desire, the masculine desire mm -hmm. to show up and make a difference. Mm. 
right? We kind of talk about a battle to fight in that language. But for me, I think I put it in terms of I want to show up and make a difference. Yes. I want to feel effective in my yes. world. Yeah. Yes. So core desires, this this week of, of core desires, how would you frame it as, as women and men? I, I would love to share. Um, I want to be known, really known. And um, I was telling Kelly this story that a couple of days ago, I was just bemoaning to my family of nobody really knows that I like almond milk lattes. Well, you know it, John, and you'll surprise me every now and again. And I, I miss being surprised by that. <laughs> and um, someone bringing you a latte. Someone bringing me mm. a latte. We just showing up with it, and you know, here at the outpost or wherever, you know, you can bring me one anywhere. I'm going to be very happy. So this morning <laughs> I get here, and Kelly has an almond milk latte for me. Oh, come on. Yes, can you believe it? You heard me oh, telling you this story. Right? Yes, this was just love a couple it. days ago. Yeah, and so. To be known yes. and seen yes, and then intervened for. Like it felt like an intervention. It's not just being known. Right. It's being met. Ah, mm-hmm. That's exactly mm-hmm. it. Yes. I yeah. love that. Yeah, that mm-hmm. is core it, it, to a woman's heart in particular. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And just to tag along, you know, one of the core desires is to unveil beauty. Yes. And a unique beauty. And so what comes to my mind is in the crisis that we've been in, uniqueness has been assaulted. It's gone. It's, it's, it's hard to see. We live in a world where people are starting to look the same and feel the same and be treated the same. And so we're, we're beginning to see in our nation, in our world, in this crisis, that people are being treated the same. They're being seen the same. Mm. They're being categorized the same. And so the uniqueness, which is so core to a woman's heart, to be, like you just said, to be seen as what you like uniquely mm-hmm. is so... Diminished, stolen, so, assaulted. Yeah. You're going to get it's me going, going here. Yeah, I, okay, okay. Relegated. I, okay, and, and gang, this is not a riff on masks. This isn't. This is a riff on what is it like to live in a masked world. Mm-hmm. Okay, so all medical things aside, please, just for a moment, that beautiful verse again in Song of Songs, let me hear your voice. Mm. Let me see your face. I love that verse. Mm. Let me see your face. Let me hear your voice. Because that is how Mm -hmm. we know Mm -hmm. one another. Mm -hmm. Are you happy today? Right. Are you pensive? Oh, you look thoughtful. What are you thinking about? Right? We we tune into one another. and, And then, Kelly, I just hadn't even thought of it until you pointed out the loss of uniqueness because most of us are, you know, buying the cheap, throwaway, <laughs> same kind of mask. But people are trying to make, you know, personality statements through their mask choices. But, <laughs> but nonetheless, that idea of a woman wants to bring beauty into the world in so many different ways, right? Uniqueness, right. Right. my own heart. Here's my heart, right? Here yes. I am. Yes. I, yeah. I am showing up. Yeah. And that's been hard. Yes. And here's my here's my face and here's my expression that's yes. like no one else. Yeah. And my words. And so much of that has been diminished and just forgotten. Um, whether it's of our own, whether it's hard to see our own uniqueness because it's a crisis. Yes. Or it's other people. Oh, I'm missing the smile of strangers. Me too. And being able to smile at them, like, mm. I, that can change mm. my day, mm. receiving a smile from mm. someone. And and just the nuances of facial expressions, yeah, yeah, that's a miss. That I mm. miss that. Mm-hmm. Last week, I was walking into Costco on 
any given Tuesday or whatever. Yeah. And I was walking in, and I I was still outside, so I had my mask on my chin, uh-huh. right? And this woman, this beautiful young woman, was walking out, and she had her mask on because she was walking out of the yes, store. Yeah. And I smiled, and she took her mask down, and she said, I'm smiling at you, too. Oh. And it, it was like it made my— Week really? Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's so good. And it was such a kind interchange. Yeah. Of unique. Yes. Unique. Unique expression. Yeah. Mm. That's beautiful. Okay, I'm gonna geek a little bit on this here. So Gabriel Marcel, beautiful French Christian existentialist philosopher, has this phenomenal essay on how children, and in this case, it's a little girl, has picked flowers and brought them in to present to you, right? And, and he was talking about the, the need for delight. We long, mm-hmm. we long to be delighted in, but I think a little girl in very particular ways. Do you see my uniqueness? Here is the gift I am bringing to you. Do you see? Do you see? Do you delight in that? And we've got a living experiment with that right now because <laughs> we've had our our grandchildren living with us for several months. And I'm serious. Like, I wish I could just turn a camera on. Oh, my goodness. Because that's like, people, if you don't believe me, like, just go hang out with two-year-old boys and four-year-old girls for a couple of days, <laughs> and all of this will be enormously <laughs> clear to you again. Like, there it is. And- oh, my goodness. This is delightful. I was sitting in my room and having my morning coffee and time with the scriptures, and there's this little tap on the door. Um, the one room that's off limits in our house is our bedroom, so we have a little sacred space. And John opened the door and said, why don't you give it to her yourself? So little Finley comes running in to me with this little piece of paper. She puts it on my lap and opens it and then goes running out. And mm. and it was this, darling, it was a picture of me. It made me cry. And there she was, like going, do you see? Do you see what I made yes. you? And Oh. Here is my unique self. Here's my mm. offering. Here's my offering yes. of beauty to the world. Exactly. Mm. And I'm bringing something loving, kind, rich, beautiful. Yes. It's, yeah, like all that, oh, these core desires, mm-hmm. all of that goodness. So, Alan, how would you voice a core desire that you are rediscovering, that you are aware of? Yeah. I'm discovering big time a need, a desire, a longing for the ocean. It's my favorite place. Blue's my favorite color. I have a painting of an ocean behind my desk at home. And I haven't seen it, felt it. Smelled it. Smell the salt Mm -hmm. in the air, heard the seagulls, the sand. Like, I'm like, what's happened? How have I gone so many years Mm -hmm. being busy doing good things Mm. and losing things that bring my soul joy and and awaken my heart. And so that's, that's one that I'm realizing reading about it, pictures, stories only take me so far. I want to immerse myself in the ocean and I want to immerse myself in that beauty of that scene and that setting. And another quick one is just I've realized one of my pursuits that I I love to do and it's been successful has been writing and story and helping writers with their stories. And that's good. And it's a desire. But the problem is I'm not going to invite you and Alex and Morgan over to my house so we all write together. Like, (laughs) you know, so I'm realizing one a big thing that I love has also taken away my time for community and family because I'm at my desk or my laptop writing. Yep. And so there's this desire to set that aside for a time, even though it's a joy, and say, what I want even more now is laughter and shared adventure and shared experiences. And somehow in the last year and a half, that's faded for productivity Uh and... Of course. Good good things for our family, financially maybe, or for me creatively. But, you know, the enemy can take good things and cause you to forget even bigger, better things. Mm. And and so I have a desire to reclaim what was lost or stolen. 
I, I just have to pause here towards the close of our conversation and ask our listeners, what are you doing with this? As you are sitting in on the conversation, listening in on desires and longings and the life of the heart and what it's been like, and can you feel things stirring in you? And, and are you aware of the life of your heart? And what is your reaction to that? Because I'll, I'll confess, there's part of me sitting here going, this is totally frivolous. People with a lot of leisure time living in a better world than the one we're living in can do this. But like, there, there's almost like mm. an anchor kind of in me. Yeah, of like yeah. we take vengeance on the desires mm. of our own hearts yes. in order to shut them down so that they are not such a mm. nuisance to us. And that is not a wise thing to do, friends. It's just not. So we're going to continue the conversation in the weeks ahead of the life of the heart and the recovery of heart and what that process and journey looks like. But this week, it's desire and allowing, allowing desire to come back in all shapes and forms, big desires, small ones, little simple things like I wish somebody would bring me a latte to really big things. I need to reconnect community. And I think I'm lonely. I need people in my life. Like mm -hmm. the whole range. Like let it come back. And if you'd like to track with us through the Wild at Heart experience or through the Captivating experience, you can jump on the website at any time and sign up for free. And we'll begin trickling out to you the, the weekly prompts for that and the films that are beautiful and you can just let it wash over you and let it minister to you. And John, one thing I just want to add, if you're going to go through the experience and I hope you, if you're listening, do, if you're a couple, Kelly and I watched both the men's and the women's. Oh, wow. And so we nurtured our own hearts, but then it gave us a lot to talk about because we could understand more wow, in your heart, this is what's going on and talk to each other about that. So um, if you're a guy listening, yes, do, you know, the wild at heart experience. But if you're married or if you are in a serious relationship, you want to understand the heart of her. Yes. And so that's just something that's available that's as really well. That's really good. And that's really good. Maybe not at the same time, because you might need, especially as we get deeper into the experience and you're processing things in your life and some of your memories and stuff, recovering heart. Yes. You may want to do that in a quiet place, Private. but then to share it and say, you know, forward, forward the email, forward the prompt. We're totally fine with that. And then, hey, say, hey, hon, you really ought to watch this episode. This, this, this really sheds mm -hmm. a lot of light on things. I love mm -hmm. that. That's a, that's a new idea. Thanks for listening. We'll be back next week in the week of March 22nd with part two.